Hello and welcome to Policy Watch, your packed snapshot of the week's biggest business stories, their context, their relevance and impact. I'm Govind Raj Ethiraj. Chinese President Xi Jinping was in India this week to explore new areas in strategic ties. After a day-long visit to Ahmedabad, President Xi held summit-level talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi, where economic ties and the border dispute were discussed. Some landmark agreements were signed as well. Here's a report. As Prime Minister Narendra Modi met Chinese President Xi Jinping in New Delhi for summit-level talks, the issue of border incursions by the Chinese army in Ladakh weighed heavy. Prime Minister Narendra Modi raised the issue, saying it was important to have mutual trust and peace at the border to realize the full potential of the relationship. We are that the peace and the और संबंधों की नींव है यह दो देशों की एक महत्वपूर्ण सहमति है और इसका दृढ़ता से पालन किया जाना चाहिए सीमा पर शांति और स्थिरता के लिए एलएसी की क्लेरिफिकेशन बहुत बड़ा योगदान दे सकती है यह कई सालों से रुका हुआ है और इस कार्य को दोबारा शुरू करना चाहिए सांगफांग तोंगी जीशु जुन्जुंग और जाओगु बीस गुआनचे以积极态度妥善处理两国间存在的问题中印边界问题是历史遗留问题多年来双方通过友好协商文部推进边界谈判取得了积极进展中印边境地区保持了和平与稳定由于边境尚未划定有时可能会出现涉边事件但双方完全
how should we be looking at it well i think first of all it's good to engage with the world because we are in an interconnected world and mm. uh, we also need to develop infrastructure so the engagement with both uh, china and japan is in the direction of uh, mm -hmm. developing infrastructure developing manufacturing and when you say sector. engagement it also almost seems to suggest that we were not engaging sufficiently earlier. we are scaling up the engagement i would okay. put it that way i think okay. we were always engaged but i think now the kind of activity you have seen mm. the concentrated activity in the last few months i think that's pointing towards enhanced engagement with uh, with the rest of okay. the world and i think it's uh, it's it's now uh, it's going to be us which is which is the next one mm. and i think this is uh, this can be a win win situation provided we put our house in order first mm. i think you you need need to have ability to absorb those investments also mm. i think you need to put uh, systems in place so that the foreign investors have comfort i think once you do them then i think uh, the the situation becomes win win because then your infrastructure is created and the person who is investing in infrastructure or the country which is investing also gets a minimum okay so infrastructure is a key word here madan how do you see this so the way i look at it is there are two parts to it if you see ever since uh, mr modi came to power he has been trying to create as enabling an environment as possible for investment so he first started off by looking at what were policies could be tweaked in order to ensure that domestic investment was kept up and i think at second in the second stage he's actually going uh, global mm. and trying to make sure that you're trying to get as much of uh, foreign investment from other countries as, as is possible and as far as china's concern i think uh, there are a lot of uh, political overtones also because mm. i don't think we've had a very very healthy relationship with china in the mm. past and i think what he's trying to do is actually uh, sort of get mm. both of them together both the politics and the economics together mm. and in the process if we're able to get more uh, investment from china mm. it will be very helpful for us okay. because overall if you see i don't think china is a major uh, investor in india as of today mm. i think it's less than half percent of the overall uh, for fdi which has come in right. so anything more would definitely be uh, positive right. and it's us. mostly imports i mean we're looking at more than 50 billion dollars so looking imports. at trade yes if you look at yeah. we, uh, we we do import a lot from uh, china today but if you look at exports we don't have too many exports going right. there yeah. so hopefully i think both in terms of trade as well as investment billion. we should be able to get it right and that's the other problem right so we are exporting low value added we are importing very high value added and that's a clear it's a deficit in more ways than one yeah actually and the deficit has widened because uh, one of our export items which was iron ore mm. is is now completely that those exports have dried up mm. so i think we are running a trade deficit of about 36 billion currently with china mm. which is about 27% of the entire trade deficit so i think china is uh, is is adversely contributing mm. and what we export is is low value good and mm. what we import is high value goods and i think the the conflict might come because we raw are trying raw cotton to, exports for yeah, instance raw yeah. cotton and i think also uh, some extent of chemicals etc mm. and iron ore was as i was mm. mentioning was one of the items so i think now the issue is india wants to develop its manufacturing sector and lot of exports into india are from uh, from mm. china mm. so i think that how do we resolve that is going to be an issue because china also is promising that they are going to open up their expo, uh, market for us in mm. the sense that things like pharmaceutical which are high value added these things could be exported to china probably mm. not just textile uh, not just cotton yarn but maybe uh, right. a, li a little beyond that right but then what can we take away from this in terms of so one is the challenge of absorption of investment right but what else can we take away from the way china has managed its own internal economy and investments no i think uh, I would tend to believe that this is going to be the beginning of something much bigger, which is mm. going to happen. But what really is going to happen? What, how exactly the flows are going to mm. uh, to, to sort of come in? It could be anyone's uh, guess. Because I, I think we should not get uh, sort of overwhelmed by what's happened mm. today. It's not to say that we're going to have billions of dollars coming sure, in, sure. even though there, there are certain arrangements which have been uh, struck in with the uh, Gujarat government, where we would be seeing certain kind of uh, significant inflows coming in. Mm. But on the whole, I think again, I'll go back to saying that uh, the uh, Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Modi, has been looking in terms of opening up certain things in fti say defense or your railway equipment we are also talking in terms of uh, large infrastructure requirements which are there and china is somebody who has the funds and in case the relations are uh, cemented mm. this would definitely help to get into flow of funds because today if you see the overall flow of funds domestically what's been generated from the debt markets or the credit mm. markets or in fact from the ecb channels are more or less limited mm. so might as well get in these kind of funds to the extent that uh, uh, they would come in okay and also uh, mr joshi we are also conjoined in some ways to the uh, thanks to the brics uh, Uh, brick bank right where does 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 that play a role or potentially play a role in all of this well it can be linked to that because brick bank could be used for funding of infrastructure etc mm -hmm. the needs of uh, the particularly these economies mm. so i think it could it could uh, it could uh, uh, it could play into this this aspect also i think it could be the funding could also be through bricks i mean okay. so so all of them i think but we haven't heard much about bricks after mm. that uh, yeah, after, after the, the announcement after the announcement yeah, but assuming i mean whole, i mean assuming that it's all coming together well i think yeah if if all the dots are connected i think you will get a good picture i mean in the right end. 
Right. So, uh, what are our key challenges today, and where can a country like China particularly or specifically help? Madan, let's see. We're looking at a. There's a funding coming in. Now, mm. the thing is that how open we are. We'll have. But, to and, and, but funding is generic. I mean, you're not saying funding that. Funding is generic. We're talking about fund. Okay, we say funding going in infrastructure, but then we need to know which particular sectors are we going mm. really going to get it. Are we going to have the same kind of an enabling environment here? Because just go back to the mm. doing business scenario is not very good for India. Mm. So it's one thing to say that okay, mm. FDI can come in, mm. but certain things have to go through Parliament. Certain things will. Have to have yeah. other kind of administrative. Yeah. And, and normally there are more red flags when it comes exactly to Exactly, more red flags. Yeah. yeah. So, exactly. So, keeping all this in mind, I think we shouldn't, actually, as I said in the beginning, we shouldn't get over, uh, overwhelmed or think that uh, there's a solution coming in. But definitely we could be seeing certain positive things mm -hmm. coming from China. Today. Right. And, and that's the signal you're also saying. You're saying that more than perhaps the Chinese investment coming in or the Japanese investment coming in, it shows that we are integrating with the global economic climate much or the in a scenario much in better in a more than we constructive way. Because I think our engagement with China had always been higher despite the political discomfort. Mm. Our trade with China expanded at the fastest rate. Today, 11% mm. of the total imports in India come from China. So mm. we have actually enhanced our trade considerably. Mm. Now, I think this will be more constructive, I think, if, if, it, if, if it is in, in, the sec in the infrastructure segment. So if I were to come back to your larger point of, let's say, the overall investment climate in the country, what is the unfinished agenda as of now? Well, I think the uh, the uh, if you look at uh, the the competitiveness index, mm. our rank has fallen 20, 20 points, I think, in the last couple of years. Doing business, Madan was mentioning, mm. uh, we, have, we have fallen. I think there, uh, the things have just begun. I mean, mm. is single like single window clearance. I think making sure that uh, the the environmental land acquisition, these issues are uh, are sorted out. Mm. I think these are the unfinished agenda because these are very critical to. Any physical investment. I mean, if, if land is such a big issue, getting mm. land, mm. or if uh, if getting electricity connection causes uh, a hard burn, I think those issues also need to be sorted right. and, out. And, and as the Prime Minister goes to the United States and meets with a whole lot of investors there, these are the issues that are going to come up again. Yeah, right? I think it's yeah. basically comfort and taxation is other issue which I think which we need to sort out mm. the the retrospective taxation etc. Right. It's, it's not been completely sorted out, but mm. we have given comfort that this will not be resorted to in the future. Right. So, Madan, what's left? No, I think the money has to come in. <laughs> I think that's the funny okay. thing because yeah. I think we've heard very good sounds being made even mm. by the previous government just before it went out of power mm. and even by the current government. But mm. we really need to see investment flowing in. I need to see the, the numbers coming in, which is actually going to lead to a revival in the economy. Right. Let's on that happy note that <laughs> the uh, revival is around the corner. We got, need to take a break on Policy Watch, but we'll come back and talk about inflation. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still with Policy Watch. The wholesale price index has fallen to a five-year low of 3.74% in August versus 5.19% in July. Buoyed by the numbers, the Reserve Bank Governor Raghuram Rajan has said that it means that the economy is in a path to recovery. Softening prices of food items, including vegetables, pulled down the WPI inflation to a five-year low of 3.74% in August. The August inflation declined from 5.19% in July, while it was 6.99% in the same month last year. The figure for August is the lowest since October 2009, when it stood at 1.8%. Buoyed by these numbers, India Inc. has raised the pitch for lowering of interest rates to boost industrial output. But that won't happen anytime soon as the RBI insists there is no point yet in cutting rates as it will see prices going up again. Inflation is coming down. That was the news on uh, on Friday, and this is consistent with our forecasts. And, uh, and and I'm glad that it's staying with our, our forecast. Bottom line: macro indicators are improving, but still have some way to go before we can declare that we are out of the woods. Uh, I'm I'm hopeful that it's only a matter of time. The RBI is targeting a retail inflation of 8% by January next year and 6% by January 2016. Meanwhile, Rajan has also said that the government must take advantage of the lowest oil prices in a year to deregulate diesel. Crude oil prices have fallen 14% since June to $96.38 per barrel. This together with the monthly price increase of up to 50 paisa a litre has trimmed losses on the fuel to just 8 paisa per litre. We need to seize this moment uh, to eliminate diesel subsidies completely. We can of course wait, but the moment may leave us and we may be back to subsidizing. The next revision in diesel prices is due at the end of this month. 
going by the present trend the under recovery or the difference between the imported cost and the retail selling price will be wiped out with a minimal hike if the government deregulates diesel prices it will empower oil companies to change rates in tandem with cost like they do in the case of petrol so uh, mr joshi the the headline number in that sense or or the interesting number is the fact that uh, the core uh, uh, consumer price inflation number has fallen for the first time yeah i think since the index was launched in 2012 mm. it has come below uh, 7% for the first time and i think it's being led by uh, partly by consumer uh, goods and also mm. also by transportation sector which is benefiting from low uh, low fuel uh, right. fuel prices and and there are some uh, sort of uh, uh, more fundamental undercurrents which seem to be secular one is the fact that oil prices are coming down the other is that we seem to be getting a grip of uh, supply side inflation is that right well i think the beginning has been made because mm. if you look at the uh, the minimum support prices very restraint increase in them mm. uh, the government has said that they will release the food grain stocks as and when required and also i think uh, wherever there is a sh- going to be a shortfall particularly in pulses etc government is saying that we'll give credit to the states to import them mm. i think all this has built confidence uh, from the supply side mm. though i think the issues still remain but i think it, the, there's more comfort so, today more importantly therefore you are now saying or uh, predicting that we could actually go into an era where inflation pri- will actually start coming down in a manner that we can project it well i think you have to build on these uh, these steps further i mean it's it's the, it's the issue of productivity in agriculture issue of protein inflation which mm-hmm. is not sorted out as yet i think all those things uh, are very much uh, we have been very lucky with respect to oil because it's a, it's 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 just sheer good luck mm. that uh, despite so much of geopolitical tension global crude prices are are low and it benefits us fiscally it mm. benefits us in terms of inflation mm. and also i think we have a lower current account deficit because the 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 oil prices and, are and diesel prices are for the first time again making money for oil companies and government's uh, uh, subsidy bill on oil will be 50 billion rupees less than what they budgeted right so that is happening after a long time right so let's put that question to madan as well madan how do you, how are you also feeling that we are now heading towards uh, or rather more than heading anywhere uh, things are in control no actually i have a slightly different view okay. because uh, as you should yeah no if you actually look at the food inflation i think yeah. that's been a major problem which we've had mm. now if you've seen the progress of the monsoon while we can take some comfort saying that the deficit has come down to 12% but mm. if you look at certain geographical regions which have been affected right. by yeah. shortfall of monsoon mm. and if you juxtapose this along with the area under cultivation of different crops so the picture we really get is that we like to have a shortage in production of pulses mm. oil seeds mm. uh, sugarcane and coarse cereals mm. and i think we have come almost towards the end of the sowing season so to my mind i don't think there can be significant gains being made here mm. now if you look at things like pulses and uh, oil seeds we are typically importers of uh, mm. around 20% of our pulses around 50 to 55% of our edible oil requirements now any kind of shortfalls out here will definitely tend to put pressure on prices we would of course be importing more but what we have seen in the past is that uh, even though we the moment in the world gets right. to know that india is importing more of these mm. commodities even in international so prices so you're saying the food component of it is something that we may not be exactly. able to exactly so control, i think the prices will not be coming down anytime soon and i think that's something which the central bank also has in mind and mm. therefore i don't think they'll be in a hurry to do anything on right. interest rates right. because of the inflationary expectations which are still there okay the so we'll we'll come to the interest rate question in a moment but you're actually saying that it's really the other components which are uh, coming under control uh, yeah. not so much food rice wheat i think they can definitely bring it and even rice has not been badly impacted this year despite the shortfall i mm. agree with madan that the the pulses oil seeds mm. i think that's our index also shows that they have been adversely mm. impacted and you can do very little about it mm. but i think good good news is that you have enough stocks of rice and wheat and the rice this year is not that badly impacted so the the and these have large weights in cpi by the way right. the, the 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 pulses etc have a smaller weight hmm. and global food price scenario today is not that bad i mean yeah, they are they are yeah. quite 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 yeah, and, and i mean there was a report that we are seeing uh, multi year lows that's right so i think so prices, imports yeah. uh, imports will not be uh, that uh, I, th- i think it will be able to import and 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 so some of this seems to be happening not because we designed it or we did something right I mean, but it's just happening oil is sheer luck and yeah. i think uh, no oil apart i'm saying even within this whole uh, the basket of consumer price inflation well i think yeah the veget fruits and vegetables is is the joker in the pack it mm. can spike see I, what is the irony of the situation last year we had good monsoons 
and very high food inflation, hmm. almost 12, 13 percent. Hmm. And this year we'll have a bad monsoon, and in food inflation is going to be lower than last year. Okay. So and that is because government has been a bit more proactive this year. Is that is that is that the reason? No, I think the numbers yeah. will be down uh, more because of a statistical reason. Hmm. Because it's something like saying that uh, tomatoes went up to 80 rupees a kilo, hmm. or onions went up to 100 sure, rupees a kilo. Sure, there's a base effect. Yeah. And, no, and now they have come down to 40 rupees, which I'm paying in the market. So hmm. it's not really, it doesn't really give me that kind of comfort. Hmm. In right. fact, I would uh, tend to believe that all this has happened because of extraneous reasons. Mm. It's not about any specific policies which have been implemented mm. to improve agricultural productivity, make it less resilient to, to the vagaries of, of the monsoon. So I think it's like uh, DK was saying that, okay, it's because of good luck that uh, crude oil prices have come down and maybe because of all these statistical numbers of or uh, things okay. going right because so, of the okay. So some things are looking good. Some things you're saying is Absolutely. has happened because we had no real design in it. Yeah. But what can we do now? What are the things that we should be doing now to ensure that inflation, which is seemingly in our grasp, should be or held there and brought down further? Well, I think one uh, one of the things that government was planning, APMC, get rid of APMC, and I mm. think that's what, uh, mm. should, to develop markets and agriculture. Mm. Then I think productivity enhancing <laughs> measures, mm. particularly I think uh, the bear. But is our, that something that can happen quickly? No, it can't happen quickly. Okay. Mm. I think so, in proteins, I think you'll have to have a mix of uh, uh, imports and also boost to domestic production, because if you start- and When you say proteins, you mean because as a country, our composition of uh, consumption is changing. It is changing, oh, yeah. and, and I think, uh, and if, I'll give you the example of edible oil. Mm. We were self-sufficient in edible oil about 15 years back, but mm. we opened up and the farmer started moving up away from oil seeds. Mm. I mean, and then today we are 50-55% dependent. Mm. So I think that should not happen in proteins. I mean, so the point is you need to push domestic sector, but to give comfort very quickly, you need to import also. So, and, 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 you're also and you're also confining, I can see your solutions to the food part of the inflation basket the, rather than anything else. I think that is the major. Because that's the major. There is, this, there is disinflation hmm. tendency in the other parts, I mean the non-food parts, Okay. Uh, particularly the manufactured items. Hmm. I think the, and I think the, our price indices don't measure it properly because mm. many of the things you see in the market, buy one, get one free. Mm. The price, so the <laughs> index is not able to capture that properly. Right. Uh, so, Madan, what, what, what's the sense? What should we be doing to capitalize on this good fortune? No, in fact, I don't think we can, we can do... a sliver of good fortune. No, the thing is that uh, the important part is that in case there's a shortfall we see in any particular commodity, we should be able to reckon the imports immediately, mm -hmm. make sure that supply is augmented. Mm. In fact, there's one another nagging fear which is there that since there could be a late uh, uh, withdrawal of the monsoon. Mm. I think last year also we saw excess rainfall during the later mm. part of the year, which actually did enjoy, which did, which did affect the crops of uh, vegetables. Mm. We should make sure that in case we're going into a similar kind of a situation, try and get your uh, the marketing part right, make sure that the imports come in at the right time, mm. so that we don't have a problem of higher inflation. Mm. That's the only way in which we can capitalize on it, because I don't think we can do anything to increase supplies as such, which have been a major problem in, in the past. And, and very quickly on interest rates, let me fin uh, allow you to finish that uh, thought. No, I think interest rates uh, should be, ideally, they should be held on for until such time that we're convinced that inflation has come down to whatever level we think is bearable. When I say we think if the RBI has targeted 8% CPI, we should be convinced that right. we, we are going to remain below 8% for a considerable period of time before we take any interest rate action. Right. Gentlemen, we've run out of time. Thank you very much for being with us. And that's all we have time for on Policy Watch this week. We'll be back next week, same time. Thanks for watching.